Now, the last couple of tools that we want to talk about are ones that we should be a little bit familiar with, but it's a good reminder. Um, we've talked about the countersink before. Now, the countersink is a cutting tool that's used to create a tapered surface around the top of an existing hole, right? As shown in this section view here. Now, um, depending on the design of this countersink here, um, we could use a countersink to cut chamfers, right? Around the outside of a part uh, by uh, side milling with the cutting tool. Now, this particular countersink, um, I wouldn't use, you know, a single, a single edge, right? Uh, countersink, I wouldn't use for cutting uh, a chamfer around this. But if it was like a, a multi-tooth countersink, um, yeah, I, 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 and I've done it many, many times, right? And so instead of plunging down into the hole to create this shape, uh, I would plunge down um, a certain distance, right? So I'd plunge down a certain distance, maybe somewhere uh, about a, a quarter of the way up uh, the taper here. And then I would approach from the side of my part till I start cutting that surface. And then I would work my way around the part and it would leave a, a flat chamfered edge right? So basically here you're getting a rounded chamfer. Well, the, if you go in a straight line um, in the X or Y axis, you're going to get a, a flat corner, right? You're going to get a chamfer all the way around. But if you plunge in the Z axis, you're just going to create that shape in the top of your hole. So I've seen uh, uh, and use chamfer to our countersink tools for both of these things. Uh, now, the last tool we're going to talk about is the counterbore tool. Now the counterbore tool, um, like the countersink, it's designed to be used after a hole has been cut. And so I, I really want to stress this point. We talked about this with taps. Uh, we want to make sure that we, we, uh, we really understand this. So uh, a tap, a reamer, uh, a countersink, a counterbore, they're all designed to follow an existing hole. So just like you wouldn't take a tap and try and um, create a threaded hole without drilling first, uh, you just explode that tool, right? Well, we would never want to send this counterbore tool down onto a solid piece of material to create the shape. There's no cutting action down here at the bottom. There's no cutting action here on the sides of the lead. The cutting action is up here higher, right? So uh, a counterbore tool uh, it's it's used uh, to create a larger diameter at the top of an existing hole. For every counterbore uh, tool, every size of counterbore tool, uh, this pilot will be a specific size according to the major diameter here or the, the diameter of the cutting edges. So if we wanted to uh, create a... Um, a counterbore at the top of this hole, uh, depending on what the size of this hole was and the size of the counterbore that we want, uh, we would have to find the counterbore tool, which its pilot would fit in here without rubbing, right? So the pilot is usually designed to be a few thou smaller uh, than this existing hole to create the specific um, large diameter. Right. So uh, it sounds a little bit confusing, but it's really not um, because, you know, if, if a counterbore tool was just a random tool that we just used for whatever we felt like using it for, it would be, how would you ever know, well, what counterbore tool do I use and how do I know which one the pilot will, f uh, you know, uh, which one has a pilot that'll fit in this hole? Well, what we, we need to appreciate what the application is. What is the purpose of a counterbore tool? When do we use it and why? So if you, you look at this um, um, section view here, so here we see an existing hole and we see that larger diameter here on the top, right? And, and that's because of this uh, counterbore tool has cut this and it, the pilot just follows this hole, right? It doesn't do any cutting. That, that hole's already there. But to know which counterbore tool um, uh, we're to use, um, I, it really depends on uh, what bolt it's for. And that's the whole purpose of a counterbore tool is to provide 
this hole right here, this small diameter hole here, uh, that's the clearance hole for this, for the threaded portion, right? It, it's, it's just, it, it's loose fitting in here, right? So um, there would be, if, if we were creating this um, part right here uh, to, to um, accept this fastener, this socket head cap screw, then this diameter here would be slightly bigger than this diameter here. And this counter bore here, right, this width would be slightly bigger than this width of the head. Because the counter bore tool is designed to accept the head of the bolt. So um, the diameter of the bolt would have to fit with clearance here. The height of the bolt head would have to sit below this surface, right? So we would have to plunge this counter bore tool down deep enough so that the whole head of this bolt sits flush or just below flush uh, here, right? So um, if you wanted to create, and maybe you have uh, created counter bores in uh, a part to accept a bolt, if you wondered why you cut the depth as deep as you did, or use the counter bore tool that you used, uh, you can find online or in uh, the back of many machining textbooks, charts, um, uh, bolt charts, socket head cap screw charts that give you all of these dimensions, right? The width of the head, the depth of the head, and the width of the bolt itself. And then uh, it'll tell you on that chart what socket head or sorry, which uh, counter bore tool to use because counter bore tools are designed to uh, manufacture holes uh, to accept socket head cap screws and other uh, fasteners. Okay, so if you want more information on that, uh, quick Google search uh, or even looking in the back of any of your um, um, machining textbooks or engineering drawing textbooks uh, will give you that information.